How would you say your mental focus is? Oh, it's focused. <laughs> I, say it's, I think it's, I, I haven't, look, I have trouble even mentioning, even saying to myself my own head the number of years. I no more think of myself as being as old as I am than fly. I mean, it's just not, uh, uh, I haven't observed anything in terms of, there's not things I don't do now that I did before, whether it's physical or mental or anything else. <laughs> But there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride chair extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, yeah. You guys already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in and let's go. Yeah! All right. Hokey dokey party people. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Thank you. All right, folks. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about double standards. Double standards. We all know in America, nobody is above the law, right? I've been hearing that since I was little. Nobody's above the law. Everybody got to go through the same rules. Everybody have to go through the same standards, right? So we all agree on that. Nobody is above the law, right? So we have a clip here of Andrew McCabe. He used to be former something or something. And he's on here complaining about if Donald Trump gets into office, he's going to go on a revenge tour and he's going to put his political enemies in jail. Go. He is someone who's entirely transactional. And if he feels like he's been wronged in some way, then he focuses on revenge and, ven and vengeance. And so he's made it perfectly clear that that's what he's going to do. And in the process of seeking that, he is going to really, he runs the risk of really dismantling and um, greatly uh, incapacitating the Department of Justice and the FBI. And that is something that Americans on both sides of the political aisle should be worried about. Yeah. We depend on those institutions to protect us. Well, what do you think it's... And he is what proposing to tear inside, him down. What do people inside the FBI think of, uh, when they hear a comment like that? You know, it's, it is, it's terrifying. It's frightening. Um, I, I have lo a lot of conversations with... Uh, former colleagues, people who are or were in the intelligence and law enforcement community uh, and may have worked in, you know, the Obama administration, other places. And, you know, people are really trying to assess, like, what is life going to be like if Donald Trump wins a second term? And on a very personal level, I mean, these are torturous discussions with their family members about whether or not they have to leave the country uh, to avoid being wow. unconstitutionally and illegally detained. I mean, people are actually worried about being thrown in jail or grabbed in some sort of extrajudicial detention. And I think, you know, as crazy as this sounds in the United States of America, I think people should really consider that these are possibilities. Listen to what the man says. He typically does what he says, as crazy as it seems. Uh, and, and that's really all the indicators you need. Oh, my God, sir. Now, I've been hearing this for a long time. If there's nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about, all right? So if you're an FBI agent and you did everything by the book and you have nothing to worry about, we're going to put you through the political process. We're going to put you through the, the process. And if there's nothing to hide, you should be free. He's not going to, he's not that petty. Right. Open the books and show everything, show all the American people, all the the wiretapping you've been doing. Show them that all the spying on campaigns or Russian dossiers and all that. Open it up. And if you have nothing wrong, you did nothing wrong. You have nothing to worry about. Donald Trump is not that petty. Right. And I said, wouldn't it really be bad, you know, with, with like, as an example, Hillary, with the uh, hammering of her cell phones and all of the things she did, but wouldn't it be ter terrible to 
throw the president's wife and the former secretary of state. You, uh, think of it. The former secretary of state, but the, pres- the president's wife into jail. Wouldn't that be a terrible thing? But they want to do it. So, you know, it's a, it's, uh, it's a terrible, terrible uh, path that they're leading us to. And it's very possible that it's going to have to happen to them. Now, you've been saying lock her up ever since 2016, 2017 for Russian collusion, for the false dossier, for poisoning the, the minds of the media with the propaganda of Russian collusion. They've been using this. They, they wiretapped his campaign all under the Clinton's foundation. Right? Miss Clinton have done so much egregious thing that the FEC fined her $8,000. Welcome back. So is it accountability? The Federal Election Commission is now fining Hillary Clinton and the Democrat National Committee over the way it paid a firm to produce the notorious Steele dossier. The Clinton campaign has been fined $8,000 and the DNC slapped with a $105,000 penalty after a 2016 letter revealed that they violated campaign finance rules. The FEC says both parties failed to properly report payments for opposition research and the production of the dossier, instead labeling the payments legal services. Now, her campaign was fined for legal advice. The exact same thing that Trump was accused 34 times, legal advice. He paid Cohen for legal advice, right, by paying off a skank. $130,000 $130,000 while he was a private citizen in 2007 and 2017 he's running. He paid the skank off as legal advice. Hillary Clinton paid a CIA agent for a dossier that never happened, colluded with Russia, colluded with the media to push this propaganda and her emails, all this stuff with, uh, FBI Comey, all this stuff. Yet she walks away scot-free. Nothing happened to her. The chair of the committee investigating Benghazi now says Secretary Clinton unilaterally decided to wipe her server clean and permanently delete all emails from her personal server. Nothing happened to her. And Trump talks about maybe I should put her in prison, her husband in prison, What would it look like for the country if he did that? But Trump refrained from doing that because he knew that would hurt the country. But you think the Democrats care? And we have Andrew McCabe here worried about if he gets in office, all the FBI agents are going to leave the country if he wins. Why? There's nothing to hide. If you did nothing wrong, Andrew McCabe, if you did nothing wrong, sit your ass here. He's not going to come after you if you did nothing wrong, right? All you got to do is open up the books. All you got to do is see who was in charge of the wiretaps, right? You have nothing to fear. Nobody's above the law, right? Meanwhile, Trump is going through the mud. He's being tarred and feathered. And everybody else, like Barack Obama, a war criminal. Simply put, these strikes have saved lives. Moreover, America's actions are legal. We were attacked on 9-11. Within a week, Congress overwhelmingly authorized the use of force. Under domestic law and international law, the United States is at war with Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and their associated forces. We are at war with an organization that right now would kill as many Americans as they could if we did not stop them first. He could go. Biden. Biden had paperwork, top secret paperwork in his garage, in his beach house, everywhere. And he was not even the president. Only the president could do that. He was a senator. He was a vice president and he had all these top secrets laying around. And when Robert Ur finally did his investigation, when he should be tried himself, they say, oh, no, nah, he's an old feeble man and he wouldn't stand in court. 
Mr. Her, page 231, you said this. President Biden had strong motivations. That's a key word. We're getting to motive now. President Biden had strong motivations to ignore the proper procedures for safeguarding the classified information in his notebooks. Why did he have strong motivations? Because, next word, because he decided months before leaving office to write a book. To write a book. That was his motive. He knew the rules. He broke them because he was writing a book. And you further say, and he began meeting with the ghostwriter while he was still vice president. Meanwhile, Trump, who have presidential immunity, he got some paperwork and they tried him. Jack Smith case is falling apart, but still, they still try him for doing that. Meanwhile, Biden gets slapped on the wrist. He's an old field man and he can't stand in court, but nobody's above the law, right? We have Clinton who paid Paula Jones $850,000 while he was president. No, this check is being transferred now without condition because everything is is worked out. All ready for the next move. You give the... You give the check? I beg your pardon? You give the check? Yes. First of all, I'm going to say it was an okay. honor to meet you. A pleasure okay. to meet you, and thank you very much. You're welcome. There's the check. And show them the check. Raise There's it. There's the check. It's your check. <laughs> Paula's not going to be saying anything. Her attorneys are here today. So kind of officially, I think what we now hope uh, that the White House has sends a message to the White House that Paula's lawyers are ready, willing, and able to negotiate in very good faith. We believe now that the White House will come and sit down at the table and negotiate also in very good faith. That's some hush money right there. And he was getting fellatio by Monica Lewinsky. And nobody says nothing about that. He's the president. He could get ahead if he wants to. Right. But Trump does it. Trump doesn't even does, Trump not even near that. And they dragging him through the mud. 34 counts for the same crime, quote unquote, that Hillary Clinton done, that uh, her husband done, that Barack Obama done. Give me a break, guys. Give me a fucking break. But anyway, it's all falling apart, and American people are seeing the truth now. Thank you, Biden. Thank you, Alvin Bragg, with your fat ass. <laughs> if you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends, and tell your mama I said hi. All right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you liberals, get your ass off my lawn.